Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We're going to give a couple minutes as everyone starts to come in. You are joining Unfiltered Finances with Ms. Dow Jones. We're very excited to have her on today. I'd love to get to know a little bit about you. Where are you joining us from? What business you come, you have, and what kind of you're hoping to get out of the workshop? Aspen, Colorado. Woo! And I'm I'm here in Austin. So I'm the senior manager of brand partnerships here at Planoly. And for those who might be new to Planoly, um, we are a social content planner trusted by over 5 million people to plan and schedule your content on anything from Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. Um, and we're lucky enough to have been working with Haley Sachs, the founder and CEO of Miss Dow Jones this past month for Women's History Month. Um, Women's History Month is so important and we know finances are even more important as well. And so we're very excited to have partnered with her this month. You probably have seen stuff on our Instagram of tips that she has shared. And I'd love um, to welcome her on as I see more and more people are here. Hello from Amsterdam. And if you can tell us what's the business you are in, that would be amazing. And then um, Haley, if you'd like to come in, I'd, we're super honored to have her. This is Haley, everyone. So you might know her as Miss Dow Jones. She's the CEO and founder. And Miss Dow Jones launched in 2018 to help people understand money. I know I need help understanding money. Um, and she makes it in a way where it's hilarious and educational. So we feel so lucky to have her here as we are closing out Women's History Month. And I will turn off my camera and let Haley take it on. But just thank you so much, Haley, for being here today with us. I'm so excited. Um, you guys, you have to let me know in the comments. We're I'm monitoring the comments as the presentation goes on. So drop your business, drop your social handle. I want, there's nothing I love more than like a female run business, um, small businesses, especially. So I'm super excited to connect with all of you. Um, great. So these virtual presentations are always sort of funny because we're obviously, I can't hear you um, or see you as we're going through it. So definitely be in those comments. I love it. Um, awesome. Desiree, I see. Rochelle, we've got a business in Denver. Amazing. I have a lot of family in Denver. Um, oh, I love an apothecary. Cool. Desiree is so cool. Um, amazing. Oh, esthetician, amazing. These are so, you guys have awesome businesses, nonprofits, design. One of my best friends has an interior design company. She's starting her own. I should tell her to connect with you. Um, oh, incredible. Everything Maya. We got some dresses. We got people from London. You guys, this is amazing. I read a stat during Women's History Month about how most, uh, small businesses are actually run by women, owned by women, which is such an exciting uh, statistic. Um, yeah, Desiree, definitely drop your guys, drop your social media handles in the chat um, and we can all connect. So let me share my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Awesome. Don't judge my desktop. I know it's a little messy. Um, I feel like there's a, two different types of business owners. One is very type A and organized and one is like a little bit more chaotic. I definitely err on the side of chaotic, um, but successful. So, you know, it doesn't really matter uh, which one you are. Let me put this into presentation mode. Lovely. Now we are in business. Let's get it, Winky. Okay, amazing. So, I'm so excited to be with all of you. Um, 
This is Save, Spend, Share, Unfiltered Finance with me, Healy Sachs. I am a financial pop star and I founded Mrs. Dow Jones in 2017 to make uh, keeping up with the Dow Joneses as fun as keeping up with the Kardashians. And we'll get into what that means. Um, but the unfiltered finance part of this will be the Q&A section that happens after my presentation. So be sure to drop any questions that you have in the Q&A part of the Zoom, amazing. Cool, so that's me, record scratch, freeze frame vibes. Um, so like many of you, I have my own business. Mine is focused on financial education. And like I said, making keeping up with the Dow Jones is as fun as keeping up with the Kardashians. I feel like there is a misconception though. Like when we see people who have expertise or are successful, often we think they have something that I don't have. They, you know, must have like been drinking a special kind of water growing up or, you know, be different than me in some way. And I want you to know that truly that is not true. I was not this kid on the left like with my lemonade stand, investing all my money, like when I was seven, you always hear about those like six-year-olds selling NFTs. That was not my vibe at all. I was much more Blair Waldorf, um, much more like spending mindlessly and emotionally, um, you know, abdicating my financial power. I didn't feel confident learning about money. I was just, I was a mess. I was a hot mess. And honestly, I'm sort of glad that I was because, you know, how fun is it to have a messy start? The, the woman in our uh, chat who was saying that she's an organizer, I feel like she must love a good before and after. I was a good before and after. Um, so great. But, you know, it wasn't really my fault that I was so, um, you know, I had no financial literacy and I was in such a bad place with my finances and I had this very tumultuous relationship to money. It really is just by nature of the fact that I never learned and most people never learn. And so that's why I'm so excited that you guys are here today because hopefully I can uh, teach you a little bit about uh, the financial basics and how it relates to your business finances and we can, uh, you know, grow from here and just continue to get better and better with money. But I mean, raise your damn hand if you have been victimized. I've been victimized. Okay, yes, Regina George got us. And by Regina George, I mean the American educational system because they don't teach you anything about money. Um, you know, I never learned anything. You probably didn't either. And that actually is a great thing because there's a lot of room for people to learn and uh, room for teachers to come in. And that is where I enter the chat. Um, when I was in my early 20s and I was trying to learn about finance, I was so uh, disenchanted and like uninterested in any of the content available to me. I feel like as a millennial I've grown up like being obsessed with like celebrities and the internet culture and like everything learning about money just felt like such a sludge so that is where my business really came from was okay well why can't I make this cool why can't I make it fun to learn about money why does it have to be that it's such a drag to take care of your finances can't we switch that mindset how great would it be if we actually were like excited and empowered to be doing this? Um, and so that's sort of my life's work is to make you rich, but also to make you uh, feel excited and cool and to make being good with money a status symbol in the same way that like Birkins and yachts are. I want us like investing in the S&P 500 and having emergency funds to be status symbols too. So that is the MO. We'll get that started in this little uh, fiesta that we're having right here. Um, so great. Um, and the reason that financial education is so important is because it really just unlocks your whole life. Like 
you know, everyone here is a dreamer. We have our own businesses. We're cultivating uh, lives that we are, you know, manifesting and thinking about like in our heads and making into realities. And money obviously is like the backbone of a lot of that. So, you know, any of that blockage that you have around money, I don't know, I personally have many blocks around money. The reason that you should be excited to get rid of them um, is because when you become financially educated, you can turn your dreams of freedom, security, and independence into a concrete reality. And I know that to be true from my own life too. So I'm really excited to share a little bit of what I teach my followers with you in this presentation and obviously follow me as well and we can continue our learnings. Um, great, so here's our plan for today. My intro is done. We're gonna kiss hello on both cheeks because obviously we are French. And then we're gonna take a little trip to, yes, you heard me girls, we're going to Ibiza. I know you're probably like, Haley, what, we're going to Ibiza? I didn't even, you know, pack a swimsuit. I don't have money for a trip. I thought that we were, you know, talking about getting good with finances. How can we be looking to travel at a moment like this? Don't worry, Ibiza is actually my patented, world famous, mind, world changing money mindset program that we are going to rock through. And then I'm going to give you lots of free resources after so that you can start building wealth, which is obviously what we all want, girls. Put a, put a heart emoji in the chat if you're about that life, if you want to secure the bag. Yes. Okay. Let's get that money. But first, let's go on our damn trip. All right. So the reason that I start with mindset, just there is like a this is all very scientific how I teach. Um, and it's because if you don't believe in yourself, nothing is going to happen. And if you like, think about it, like if you didn't believe that you could start your own business, you never would have. And the same goes for finances. Like if you don't believe that you can shift your relationship to money and create abundance in your life, then you never will. Um, and so let's get rid of what's holding us back and figure out what we're gonna make happen going forward, all right? Let's go to Ibiza. So that's that's me with your with your with your uh, ticket. Yes, we you have one. Identify. So this is step one. We're going to first part of anyone's money journey is actually not like looking at your cash flow, starting a Roth IRA or any of that stuff. It's actually really just like taking a second and thinking about what is holding you back? Like, what are your limiting beliefs about money? Are you resisting looking at your cash flow? Are you, you know, do you not believe that you can manage your own finances without understanding ourselves and our relationship to money? Nothing can change. And, you know, I have a money 101 course called start here. And obviously we go to Ibiza in that as well. Um, but our the reason that we do that before we even look at cash flow or anything is just because, you know, you're not going to change anything if you don't believe that you can change. And so much of the time we're holding ourselves back and, you know, it takes a lot of self-awareness to grow wealth. It's easy to do, actually. It's quite simple, but it does take, um, mindful change. So it's important to know like what's holding me back. Why haven't I done this yet? And I feel like with business finances too, like I know as a business owner, like I've had, I had to go through this as well. Like there's been moments where like I was resisting looking at my cash flow, my PL, because maybe like, you know, that month was a little rough or whatever. And it's like when you have those moments of resistance, it's really important to like identify them and work through them because otherwise they will hold you back. Um, and, you know, society sort of wants you to be held back. We have a very predatory society when it comes to finance. They don't want you to 
push through these limiting beliefs or these money bias biases. They want you to be scared so that they can sell you products and they can take advantage of you. Um, but I don't want you to be taken advantage of. I don't want you to be paying for things that you don't need to be paying for. And so it all starts with just first sort of seeing like, you know, what's happening, what's going on, how, how am I dealing with this stuff? So we're going to start it with identify. That's the first part of our trip. And also sun cream, of course, because we're in Ibiza. And then we're going to begin again. Um, you know, even if you spent in a way in the past that you aren't necessarily proud of, let go of it. Stop beating yourself up. The beauty of life is like we wake up every day and there's a clean slate. Like every day that I wake up, I'm like, cool, I get another chance to try. And like, it's the same thing with your finances, like forget the past. Sure. Like if you have debt and stuff like that, you have to, you have to get out of it, but like, does it mean that you have to be upset at yourself for what happened? Because ultimately you didn't know better. It's like what I put in the beginning of this uh, presentation, raise your hand. If you've been personally victimized by a lack of financial literacy, how can you uh, get down on yourself about things that you actually never learned. So, um, you know, and I also like, we, I need you to be on your own side so that when you are with money and you're spending it and you're growing it and you're negotiating and you're closing deals in your business and you're scaling and you're doing all of this amazing stuff, um, you don't have emotions tied up with it. Uh, and that will really allow you to do value-based spending because the truth is you don't have to stop spending money. You just have to stop spending money on things that you don't like, or you don't really care about. Um, and in order to do that, you really have to give yourself a fresh slate. So then we're going to imagine, and I mean, I'm sure that everyone here has like five-year goals. They've been thinking about their, they've been using Planoly to think about what they want in their business this year and how they can scale and improve. But, you know, what do you really want to accomplish? What would happen if you were really in a good shape with your finances? Do you want to buy a house? Do you want to, do you want to scale your business? Do you want to sell your business? Um, are you someone who wants to stop working eventually? Like what is, what are you going for? Because otherwise, you know, that's what, I'm, that's what we were, that's what I was saying with the quote. Like now you see the presentation actually makes sense a little with the tweet that I showed you about the, remember this, the, uh, when you become financially educated, you can turn your dreams of freedom, security, and independence into concrete reality. So what is that reality for you? You know, you've got to imagine it and know it. And then the beauty is that you can make it happen. I have no doubt. You have no idea how many people I've seen work this program and turn their lives around. So I'm just waiting for you. You're next. And then, of course, what's next? Zone in, um, which I think we all know that, like, why, why am I starting this whole uh, presentation with mindset? It's because mindset is everything. And zoning in means like, today is great. We're on this Zoom. You're probably feeling hopefully excited. You can feel like, you know, ideas and hopefully like positivity and hope and like, you know, excitement about taking control of your finances. But what about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? How are you going to fortify this mindset? That's why we need to zone in. And zoning in could mean intentionally taking in content. It could mean downloading an audiobook that inspires you or can teach you something about wealth that maybe you don't know about. But it could be a community that you join. We have a Facebook group called the three comma club that is super inspiring and every day people post content and questions it's a full community where you can always be fortifying this mindset but I think we all know this as business owners the the world doesn't want you to be great like there's a lot of adversity 
And you have to create your own luck. And that includes zoning in and creating your own like content stream, your own um, timeline, basically. You know, we've all been on Facebook. We see the timeline. If you could put everything that you wanted on yours, what would be on there? What would make you feel like, damn, I can do whatever I want. I'm going to take over the world. So you got to zone in. And then, of course, act. It all comes down to action, right? We can talk a lot, but if you don't do anything, nothing will change. So I have a great, if you're someone who feels really like you could use help with your finances, like maybe, hey, this really resonates with me. You're right. I, I never did learn about money. I need a teacher. I, it's, you know, I'm feeling it in my business too. I want to learn how to spend mindfully. I want to learn how to manage my finances on a monthly basis. Um, start Here is an amazing place to start. It is my best-selling Money 101 course. It only takes 20 minutes a day. There are three levels of financial goals that makes it super easy for you to know exactly how to improve your financial life. You don't have to think about them. I give them to you. And there's something called the money book, which is a digital ledger that you can use to manage your finances and to see how they compare against, uh, you know, people always talk about the 50, 30, 20 budget, right? The Have you ever heard that? It's 50% on your wants, 30, 50% on your needs, 30% on your wants, and 20% on future you. And what we do in the money book is break down how are you spending now versus what would it look like if that was your ratio? And it makes it really clear where you can make change. So, and it's exactly, it's a personal finance, finance, it's a personal financial management system I personally use for myself in my business and in my personal life. So um, yeah, Start Here is amazing. It's been uh, amazing. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of the beginning. You know, I just wanted to start sort of with mindset and uh, encouraging you because I know that you can do this. And then also giving you actionable advice, which is really to take advantage of our free digital community. I also have a ton of free resources on financeschool.com from books to read that can help improve your financial literacy to tools to use from best business credit cards to, you know, um, like we have free debt payoff planners emergency fund calculators, basically everything you need to get your financial house in order is on that website. So hoping that you're feel, feeling good there. And now before we do the q and I just want to quickly go through some small business owner specific tips because that's obviously who's watching this and very important to serve you all. So tips for you all is number one, look at your own finances. I feel like this is very basic, but also like I know for myself, like sometimes there are times where you just want to hide from things. You want to hide from your finances. And it's really important, like I said earlier, to make sure that you push through and actually do look at your finances and know where you're standing in your business. Um, because then we got in vulnerable positions where maybe we want to take on debt that for a business that maybe isn't really working or we are impulsive and we are doing things because we're actually scared to look at the truth. So know your numbers. That's step one. I recommend looking at your finances first thing in the morning. That's when I do it because after a cup of coffee and you've had a little breakfast, you can't like, there's, you have a lot of willpower. Your willpower is the strongest in the morning. So I hope that works for you. And then insurance is huge. I feel like no one talks about business insurance, but like, you know, as you gain employees, things like this, 
you're going to need disability, you're going to need all these different insurances and make sure that you have good insurance. Um, uh, if you have questions about which one to use or you want to, uh, yeah, to discuss it, go in the Three Comma Club. I'm always in there. We're always uh, monitoring those discussions and I'm happy to help. And then, yeah, tax stuff. Another thing that we never learn about, but taxes are funny enough, something I'm very passionate about. I know most people wouldn't consider their passions taxes, but you know, I think that it's important to lean into things that maybe scare you a little. And so that's how I feel with taxes. I was always like really avoiding them. And I was like, you know what? I have to do these every year. Let me just learn about these. And I did. And I have to tell you, it's changed everything. And I have great tax content on Mrs. Dow Jones. Um, and it has been such a game changer for me and my business. Cause like, I feel like I used to just like in January get so many like 1099s from people that had paid me. And I just like, wouldn't know what to do with them. And, you know, maybe I'm like, like, uh, did my filing status change? And just like, always worried that I'm leaving money on the table and that I'm going to do it wrong. And like, you know, it doesn't have to be so scary. None of this has to be so scary. If we change our mindsets, we change our lives. And then, I mean, if we, if you survive COVID and Omicron and now Omicron too, you probably know this, but you have to have a business emergency fund. I mean, it is so key emergency fund for your own life. So important three to six months of baseline living expenses, but for your business too, you have to have one because if you have employees, you don't want to ever feel like you can't make it through a month without earning anything. You want to feel like you have, people call it runway. You want to feel like you have a little bit of runway. Um, so have a business emergency fund and keep it in a high yield savings account. I like Capital One. You'll see that on financeschool.com. Not sponsored, just a fan. Great. Now let's go. I'm so excited for the q and I feel like I've just been babbling on. So I can't wait to look at the chat. I've been not looking at it. Fab. Oh my God, amazing. I'll stop Thank sharing you. my screen. No, no worries at all. Everyone's probably like, looking at to see at what's on your background no I'm like don't look at like, Ooh, like what's coming up what's coming up that's well, what I'm saying I'm not very organized no this is great I mean we'll have to see more before and all after. the hearts hell yeah all of you were claiming that money bag I love it yeah oh we all want to claim the money bag yes oh my Everyone. god cool Catherine's taken start here I love that I started okay. a business to get cash flow for myself. Uh, it has robbed money from our family budget. Oh, I mean, that's not even a question that someone wrote, but I feel like how many people here have, you know, borrowed from themselves for their businesses? You know, like it's so hard because a business is like an asset that you are like, oh my God, this is going to make, oh good, Tia's taking start here. How do you like it? Oh, that's so exciting. Um, but it's really hard. It's really hard to, uh, to know where the boundary is. That's why you have to have your personal finances in a good place too, you guys. That's why Start Here will be empowering because if you don't have your personal finances in a good place, how can you have your business finances in a good place? When should you separate your business, your bank accounts? I think separate your bank account. I say to people when they have side, when, when they're at the side hustle phase, because you just don't even want to go to like different pots. You know what I mean? Like if you need to spend something on growing your business, it shouldn't come from your personal life. And also think about all of the tax deductions that you can get if you have it all separated. So I, I say make a separate bank account sooner rather than later. And also just like as a way to be like, yeah, I am a business owner. Like it'll make you feel empowered and like, cool. How to financially plan. Oh, this is Alex. This is a great question. So um, Alex asked about how to financially plan when you don't have stable income, which is obviously, I mean, I deal with it. We all deal with it, right? We don't make the same amount of money every month. It's not fixed when you are an entrepreneur. You would see, you see, we'd in start here, we recommend that you average out the last like three to five months of your income. Honestly, you can usually do the last three months and get away with it. And it's totally fine. 
Um, but you sort of know, like when you're doing that, like this does feel like the amount that I'm making sort of each month. Um, so I would say average out is really helpful. Jess, so we're going to separate those bank accounts. Hell yeah. I have all my money in one account and no savings amount. I live month to month and spend far too much emotionally. Lisa, first of all, like, thank you for sharing. And also like, I'm excited for you because that means that you have so much in front of you. That's like going to change your life. Like that. I love that you're going to, act, you have so much room for change and that is an exciting thing. Um, so honestly, I would say the best thing that you could do is take start here because then you can, um, you'll have access to the money book. Um, you definitely need to separate your accounts. And I would say like something that is really huge and start here and start here, think about it as a money 101 course. So this is for people like you who maybe haven't really like looked at their finances yet. Very overwhelming when you think about it as a whole. Do it in little chunks, okay, Lisa? 20 minutes a day. You could start at 10 minutes a day. That's all, no more. Do not let yourself do more than that. Because what our goal is, is for you to come back tomorrow and to make that a habit of you looking at your finances and getting comfortable. Think about, mon think about it as your money muscle, right? You have to strengthen your money muscle. Most of us have no money muscles. We never trained our money muscles in school. We have no idea how to do any of this. And you wouldn't just go to the, go run a marathon without training. You would do a little bit every day. So um, I would definitely say that you need to start small and work your way up and also find something to guide you um, because you obviously, like there's a lot obviously um, for you to learn. But Lisa, there's, um, I hope to see you in the Three Comic Club. We I'm love, we love. Oh, sorry, Haley. I'm no, seeing a going. question pop up a lot on the Q&A box. I was hoping we could, we could cover it because there seems to be a lot of interest in regards to freelancers. So they said, do you have any advice on investing as a freelancer or how to get retirement savings in order as a freelancer? And there's another kind of similar one about doing your taxes as a freelancer. I knew you guys were going to answer. We're going to ask this. So I am so, um, I'm ready for it. I was doing all of this research yesterday so that I could bring you that good, good, um, but yeah, so retirement savings for small business owners, first of all, we have to save for retirement. Like it's very easy to think like, oh, I have a business. That'll be my retirement. Don't, I always say like, don't think about saving for a retirement as like, uh, you're guaranteeing that you have to move to Boca or even retire. It's really just a way to hide money from uncle Sam. Like you guys know that I love taxes, saving for retirement is just like a tax advantage way to put money away for the future. Like the, the government is always taking your money, saving like these tax advantaged accounts are one of the only ways that like we're, we get to keep it. So that's why we take advantage and we max it out. So, um, there's really five different ways that you can save, uh, for retirement as a small business owner, self-employed person. The first is a traditional or Roth IRA. Um, if you are leaving a job and you, that you have a 401k in to start your own business, this is a great thing to roll that 401k into. You can roll that into a Roth. Um, and there was a contribution limit of $6,000. So maxing out your Roth is just a really great financial goal. Um, and when you take that money out in retirement, when you're 50 year and a half, that money gets to come out tax-free. So you're putting tax money into your Roth. And when you take it out, because it was already taxed at the beginning, they don't get to tax it again. So you're like 59 and a half with your tax money that's grown in the, in the market. And like, how amazing is that? So we love that. The Roth, you've got to have your Roth. Roth is like chef's kiss. Then there's this question, the age-old question, are we going to get the solo 401k or are we doing the SEP IRA? Personally, in this house, I love a SEP. I think a SEP IRA is great. Um, 
I think that it is, uh, you know, you can invest up to 25% of your net income um, and the contributions there are tax deductible. But um, I, with, as a small business owner, what's not really discussed is that we actually have like really cool tax options for retirement. Like these, most people have a, if you have a job with, say you work for a company, you have a 401k, which is with a 401k, you have a salary, right? They take out money to put into your 401k, your company does before you get your salary. And then you get your salary and you put it in your Roth. Okay. So they're doing the 401k part for you. And then you're doing the Roth IRA part for you. And that's all that you get to do just those two. And then maybe you can have a tax advantaged brokerage account where you're like buying stocks or bonds after if you have extra surplus money after all that. When you are, and by the way, 401ks have a low bar. So like you can't actually put that much in your 401k. But when you're self-employed, SEP IRAs, you can put up to like, I think it's like $63,000 into your SEP. And that brings down your taxable income. So the amount of money that you, that Uncle Sam gets to draw from, mm -hmm. small, tiny, very, very small, gets a lot smaller because of that SEP IRA. Um, but I think that, you know, probably me explaining all of this is a little bit going in one year out the other, which I understand it's easy for that to happen. Um, I have really great resources on this that are like written and more, uh, like, like, so that you can actually spend a little time with them to figure out which one is best. Um, I know I'm here wanting to write and I'm like, okay, this is going to be recorded. Yeah, no, I'm I don't be want like, you to, do, 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 do. this is good for the me tax too. advantage. Mandy said, what's a tax advantage account. I, I just am trying to like rebrand saving for retirement as like investing in a tax advantaged way, because okay. they're the same thing. When you put money into a Roth, into a 401k, these are, you're getting tax advantages. With a 401k, you're, like I said, you're putting money from, their, your company is putting money from your paycheck before you get paid. So it is money that is pre-tax that then gets to be invested. Okay, so we're mm -hmm. investing money pre-tax. That's pretty good. Nice tax advantage there. Roth IRA, the tax advantage there is that you are putting money that's already been taxed and then it's growing tax free and you get to take it out without taxes. If you are not in one of these accounts, say you just like are, you know, day trading or whatever, you're just putting money into the market. You have to pay capital gains taxes. You have to pay all these different taxes that suck and eat into your earnings. And we don't want you there. You know, we don't want Uncle Sam to eat into your earnings. But like I said, I think that this is a, something that I'm happy to discuss more and we can talk about after in the three comma club, meet me there. Um, and that I talk about a ton, but I uh, find it like, unless I had slides to show you, I don't right. know how clear it is for me to just be babbling on about it. Um, but I really want you all to understand and you totally can understand. It's not that hard. You, I just want to teach you. Yeah. Um, so definitely we don't get to some of these questions, um, during this time, please do go to the three comma club on Facebook, um, to have those in there. Do you think then there was a question that mentioned the emergency fund and where to keep it? So do you think the, is the Roth part of that? So the, so the emergency fund is your, um, this is money that we need to have easy access to. This is for an emergency, right? If you're, uh, if you have to, you know, repair the roof on your house or you are in the hospital or whatever, like we don't want to invest that money because the market goes in seven year cycles and over seven years, historically, this is, I'm looking at the last hundred years of market returns, it goes up, but the road sort of like being a business owner. The road is like this, but we're going up. And so say you have an emergency and the road is down. Uh-oh, that money that you have for your emergency might have gone down in value, which is normal when you're investing, but just not a risk that we want to take with money that we need easy access to. 
So what we do instead is we keep it in a high yield savings account. And like I said, I like the one from Capital One. Marcus has a great one. Really, you guys, there's not one high yield savings account that I could or would tell you to get because they're, it's so competitive now that there are, there, there are, they're all very similar. I will right now Google best high yield savings account and send you a link of from nerd wallet of the best friends the best ones from march just choose literally one of these ct has one with charles schwab lovely any of these are great you know um so trust nerd wallet yeah i like a nerd wallet yeah. great i love nerd wallet too yeah the, the biggest thing with any financial services that you are like when you're looking online, things like that for information is you just want to see, I always look like, is this sponsored? Are they getting paid to tell me this? Or is this like an actual opinion? And, you know, you just, with no, with nerd wallet, they do have an advertiser's disclosure. So, you know, that they are working with some of these, uh, high yield savings accounts, but um, that doesn't really take away from it because they're still uh, breaking down the APY, which is the, I can share my screen and show you guys how I look at this. Um, here, yeah, I think that here. would be perfect for the one question that was like, can you explain what high yield savings accounts are? Okay. So, so maybe the again, perfect. we're not judging my, we're not no. judging the background. Um, yeah, this is the judge. Okay, so okay, so I literally <laughs> no judging. You get kicked out. <laughs> I just want to show you how easy, and I just want to show. Okay, so I'm literally I'm like best. I want to open the, the high yield savings account. Best high yield savings account. Okay, great. I'm gonna go to like I said, Nerd Wallet. Wonderful. So then they have all these different choices. Oh no, which one am I gonna choose? There's so many different ones. Well. We want to look at the APY, which is the, this is the amount of interest that you get back on a high yield savings account. And just so you know, high yield savings account versus regular checking account, regular checking account. Like if you kept your emergency fund just in your bank, it's like 0.01. So you're making like hundred times on your money just by putting it in a high yield savings account. I wouldn't consider this investing, but I would consider this being smart with your money. Um, yeah. see what's the difference, 10 times more interest, not a hundred times, 10 times more interest. So we will take it. We let any, anything more than the checking account we love. Um, and then, uh, there are there bonuses. So Alliant has a bonus, but like, you know, none of these have like a, any like thing you don't have to pay them to be part of it. They really are just, um, they, you can join them. Uh, yeah. So I mean, all of these are good. Yeah, they're so, these are all good. And then, you know, I, I understand completely. Sometimes it is very scary to make financial decisions. That's why in my presentation, I, I emphasize zoning in and like making sure that you have that like timeline of like community and content that can support you. Um, come if you have questions come to the our Facebook group every day people ask what high yield savings account should I get which how should where should I open my investment account like these this is a go-to place to ask questions that you might think are stupid but guess what everyone else has so you know it's so important to join a community that's so true. I've been seeing these questions and I have all these questions. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Like that's, and yeah. by the way, doesn't that make you feel like, Hey, it's, I'm not stupid. It's actually just, no one was taught this. Right. I, I always see you talk You're about not stupid Roth, at all. and I'm like, I don't know what Roth is. And so hearing you now talk about, it, I'm like, okay, now I understand a little bit more. I hope so a little bit, but you know, we just scratched the surface. Um, uh, okay. So let's look at more. I know um, we, we maybe have time for two more questions, but totally up to you, Haley. I want to be respectful of your time. Um, do you want me to go into more? Some of I mean, I could do this all day, but unfortunately I have to, I have another shoot. I'm just going to sit back for a second. Look at these. What types yeah. of ways can we save in the most beneficial way? Okay. So a lot of people are asking about where to keep your savings, which we covered with the high yield savings account, but you know, the important thing about understanding 
your cash flow and how much should go in your emergency fund is it's like, it's really important to know for your business and for yourself, like how much it costs to run, like how much does it cost to be you each month and how much does it cost to run your business each month? You know, and that will give us a lot of understanding about, you know, when you are done saving your emergency fund, because our goal with any, your whole goal on your financial journey, at least with the people that I teach is to start investing because investing is the only way that you can grow wealth. You can work for your money, which we all do, but investing is putting your money to work for you. Um, and that's really, it's, this is how Warren Buffett got rich. This is how like every person who is, who you think about, who's like wealthy, Oprah, everyone, they're all doing it through investing. Um, and the way to, and to get to invest is that you have to have surplus money, right? So you have to be good. You have to be able to pay your expenses and your bills. And you have to have, you don't have debt that you have to pay off and your emergency fund is saved, and then you have extra money at the end of the month that then you can put into the market. But obviously it takes steps to get there. So that's why in Start Here, we have the three levels of financial goals for you to work through. And then once you've worked through all three of those, you're ready to start investing, um, which is really exciting. I like that um, you explain that because I think a lot of people feel they need to start investing now. And it's, they forget like, okay, but do you have, you know, don't be the Blair Waldorf. Like, can you pay your necessities, your debt and all this stuff before thinking of fully investing? We had Ashley who said, I'm definitely going to take your money one-on-one course, but for one-on-one specific to me advice, do you think, oops, and then it disappeared. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. She, I just responded to it, but we should talk about it. She was saying, should I get a financial advisor? Which a lot of people are asking because obviously, you know, it would be great to just have someone to do this for you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And the thing that I always say is I always talk about Rihanna. Rihanna, obviously billionaire now, her company is about to like go public, but Rihanna was someone who got a financial advisor, was like business, busy, singing, whatever, doing her whole thing had someone else who was doing all of her finance stuff for her. And, but she never really educated herself about money. So she didn't really know what was going on and she got very taken advantage of. And it's not to say that this will happen to you, but what worries me about looking to a financial advisor or someone like this is that they are in a way a quick fix to a deeper problem. If you do not understand your finances, then you will, you will, it's very easy to get taken advantage of. So I would say before you look to a financial advisor or someone like that, first invest in educating yourself so that when you meet with these people, you're able to talk to them in a confident way and understand when they send you things or when they show you statements or this or that, because otherwise, remember in Ibiza, um, the first, uh, the I is investigate. So if you don't, otherwise you're going to start ignoring, right? You're going to just say, oh, okay, they, they're taking care of it. It's fine. And then move on with your life. And, but we don't really know what's happening. Right. That's true. And if you saw Shit's Creek, and all these pop culture movies, please, please do inform yourself. I know we're at time, so I thought we can end it with, um, there was one question that said, what are some financial resolutions you think all business owners, creators should set for 2022? Oh my God, I love that. Um, I think I, being generous is so important. Like I find, I think that money is energy and that like, it flows to and from us and like we shouldn't hold on to it so tightly so like even if it's a small amount to give away or you know even if you don't have enough to give away just find new ways to like give your time but I think that's really important um and like probably not talked about enough but like you know whenever we grasp anything too tightly it never works so you have to be able to you know let it go and let it flow to you um I think another financial resolution I would love to see everyone here having in 2022 
or making in 2022 is asking for more, asking for more, negotiating for more, knowing their worth, not being afraid to walk away if something doesn't serve them. We all know what it's like to have horrible clients, to feel, you know, beholden to dollar amounts. Don't be afraid to walk away. That is the power of an emergency fund, of a business emergency fund in one your own life. If you have an emergency fund that lets you, you know, you're living with someone, you're in an abusive relationship that lets you leave. You're not stuck there. You know, if you're in a job that you hate, you can leave the job. You have three to six months of uh, savings to live off of while you get back on your feet. And the same thing is true for your business. If you're working with someone who's really toxic, a emergency fund lets you walk away. So right. walk away. And then um, I would say invest in yourself is another resolution. Like take time every day before you get in the rabbit race of emails and of checklists and all that stuff. Take time in the morning, wake up a little earlier and try to fortify your own knowledge because that will really pay dividends. I agree. And as women, like we, you know, I feel like we are breaking these barriers. We're seeking ways to know we are powerhouses and we can do this. And a lot of it is education. So thank you, Haley, for your time and your knowledge. Um, I can tell from the chat box that everyone enjoyed it. They enjoyed getting the feedback about the financial advisor as well. Um, and just want to remind everyone, do you want to give any last words again where they can find you? So I know you linked out your um, the three commas club, please follow her at Miss Dow Jones. This and is then, Jones and everything is at financescool.com. And financescool.com. And just thank you so much for your time, Haley, today. Of course. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Have a good one.